All right, Todd with Air School back with Dave. Dave, a question for you. It's cold outside, freezing cold. I'm enjo enjoying inside. Mini split is pumping hot air. All of a sudden it stops and I see a code. Code is DF, maybe it's H1, it's HS, or a flashing blinking light. What is going on with my mini split unit? Looks like it's gonna be one of those days. Um, no, actually it's perfectly natural, perfectly normal what to do. Take a chill pill. Your unit is going through the defrost mode. Okay. Okay. So what's defrost so, mode? Well, so what happens, and it's especially, we're making this video, what, what's the date? On the 21st of October, 2025 here. So this is that time of year where you have potentially freezing temperatures in a lot of places, and but not, not super cold yet, right? And so the relative humidity can still be maybe, okay, if it's 65% relative humidity, Indiana, Michigan, wherever, mostly probably east of the Mississippi where humidity levels, you're going to see more of this, more prevalent in more humid areas. But what happens is your outdoor coil, the way that heat pump works, that outdoor coil has to be colder than the air temperature, okay? And so if it's 35 degrees out and your outdoor coil is 26 degrees, that's cold enough to freeze the moisture that's in the air. And so when that moisture freezes, it frosts up that coil. And when it frosts up, two things happen. One, you don't have any airflow coming through that coil anymore. And so because of that, the refrigerant can't change state. And it can't change state. It doesn't, it needs to, that outdoor coil has to be cold in order to carry the heat, to sponge up the heat and take it in the inside. So first thing that happens is you're not happy because you're not getting any warmth. And the other thing, and equally as important to the machine itself is the compressor is not going to be happy because if that refrigerant doesn't change state from a liquid to a gas or vapory to a just superheated gas, when it gets to the compressor, if there's liquid going through that compressor, sludge type effect, you know, 20W50 with some sand putting your engine, same thing. You don't want to do that. You don't want to have a frozen compressor. And so it's protecting itself. And that maybe the machine cares more about itself than you, but depending <laughs> on the designer, maybe it, maybe it's there that it cares more about you. But until that ice is melted off of the at that outdoor coil, you're not going to have any heat back. So it's a natural process of getting that ice melt, melted off or snow or whatever is keeping that coil from having airflow through it off of there. So how, how long does it typically last? Like, uh, is this like an hour long or, you know, minutes or? Well, to us, it's it's like the mythical, you know, 250 years ago before Zeus, how, however long ago before there was Zeus, maybe you'd, you'd see a picture of a giraffe, right? But <laughs> in Las Vegas, we've never seen this actually. We yeah. hear that this yeah. happens somewhere, right? Yeah. But so, but I, my understanding is that, yeah, it depends a lot on the, the temperature and how much the humidity level is. So the, the humid, more humid it is, it could be a fight to keep that from icing up all the time. Once you're down to, or it could be snow or, you know, it's an extreme ice storm, right? Where just constantly would be freezing up and you'd be trying to keep that ice off of the coil. But once you get down to like five degrees or once you get to colder temperatures, there, there's less moisture in the air. And so then this is not happening, doesn't, won't be doing it for as long and it won't be doing it as often. But right around hmm. outdoor, the, the perfect scenario for it to ice up is, is when there's still a lot of humidity in the air above freezing. And meanwhile, your coil has to be below freezing in order to sponge up that heat. And there are people say, oh, how does this work? How do heat pumps work? There's no heat outside when it's 20 degrees. Well, it's all relative compared to absolute zero, right? And so it's, if you, as long as that outdoor coil is colder than the outdoor air temperature, it can soak up that heat and carry it to the inside. Okay. So if, if my unit is dripping water or, uh, you know, it's blown off smoke or steam. Is that an issue or is that kind of part of the natural process here? I know per per perfectly natural, uh, but it could be a little disconcerting, right? Because if it's not, it's not smoke. It's just, you're, you're basically boiling off the, the ice that was on there and it's evaporating off. So that coil, it, 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 you try and get that coil at a pretty warm temperature, maybe up to like 70 degrees, right? And so the water, so the ice is gonna melt off. Where does that water go? There's all these, all mini splits have a hole in the bottom, goes through that hole. And it, it's all fine and dandy when it's 28 degrees, cause it's not gonna, I mean, maybe it's gonna take have enough time to flow. But if there is higher humidity and it's like, like 
I had lived, uh, or I stayed, I should say, I had a chance to stay in Minnesota for some months uh, in 2016. We had a McDonald's cup with like half full of water. And then when it's 10 below, you're throwing that water up. And by the time it hits the ground, it's already frozen. And so you can imagine the water that's coming out of the bottom of your unit, if that's if that's right kind of walkway on the side of your house or whatever, that could freeze the walkway right there. And so then that's, I mean, liquid becomes a ice in a hurry um, when it's colder temperatures. And so our unit comes with a little plastic plug with a little, to, to make the water, you can direct it, make the- Kind of divert, divert it down it channel or the, something. Divert the, divert the water to where you want it to go. But if it's, if, if it's right where there's a walkway, you might want to put a tube, uh, like a condensate tube, which we don't include in our kit. Maybe yeah, like PVC tube, pipe or get, something. Yeah, PVC pipe, lows, get the water so it, but there again, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, tell us from the field of anyone who has this, these units and there's a lot of water and you're in a colder area, like, because by the time the water is going into that PVC pipe, it could be freezing too, and that could be a problem. So maybe you're, but if your outdoor unit is further off the ground, you, know, you could see in the extreme where like <laughs> the outdoor unit is being pushed out from all the yeah it's just the ice, ice is building up yeah right? and yeah and but hopefully you're not having to deal with that but it, i think for most people as long as they're it's not an area where they walk and if it's on your units on pavers or there's a crack between the pavers where this water can drip into the ground i guess the ground's probably frozen at that point too but it, there's not it's not like in the summertime when the condensation is coming out of your indoor unit and and they're the refrigeration cycle is back to what we call normal, where your indoor unit has that cold coil. And I mean, if it's 60%, 70% humidity and your indoor coil is 35, 40 degrees, that is really, there's a lot of moisture in the air. And then, I mean, you're getting gallons, you know, an hour out of your indoor unit if you're in Florida or Louisiana or whatever, and um, or Michigan or Indiana for that matter, in, a, in you know, humid days. But it's not it's not that much liquid compared to to uh, summertime because there simply is not that much liquid that can be held by the air as you get into colder temperatures. So okay. hopefully it's not yeah. a huge problem for people. But I would like to hear a story of what you, how you've solved this if you have had this issue of water coming on your out of your unit and then freezes up right away. Yeah, that'd be great if yeah people could leave comments about that. Um, just out of out of curiosity, what? Um, what's the kind of the operating range like in winter time for heat pumps um you know mini splits like air spool and other brands well so it, it depends so the kind of the evolution heat pumps used to be saying oh heat pumps do everything great except heat they get down to like 39 degrees <laughs> and yeah. and then they kick up which is still not bad because between like 65 or 39 or whatever when they used to work that was you know cheap cheap way to heat your house during that period but now they're uh, with inverter compressors. The compressors can spin faster in the winter, and get, that got you down to around 15 degrees. R32 refrigerant, the newer refrigerants are, you can say what you want in terms of, oh, they're flammable. Um, but I mean, they're A, they're better for the environment. And yes, they are <laughs> slightly flammable, but there's other people that made videos on that. But B, they also allow you to uh, get to colder outdoor temperatures down to like five degrees or whatever. And then ours, and ours is not alone, not super new technology, but new for the air school unit, is this enhanced vapor injection. And that uh, allows the, it preheats the compressor and it, meanwhile, it makes the outdoor coil even colder. So ours will go down to minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit and um, others with bigger coils and other bigger EDI uh, cylinders probably go um, colder than that. But that's, a, that's a, at that point, we feel like minus 22 Fahrenheit is a, wide swath of these United States to take care of business. But yeah, God, 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 God bless you if you are so. in, in an environment where it gets if you're, if you're dealing with <laughs> that, than that. You're a hardy individual. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very good. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. We've gotten multiple questions about um, some of these codes and, and kind of what is happening when defrost mode pops in. So yeah, thanks for, for sharing that. Is there anything else you want to share on the topic? Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is, it's a normal thing. So defrost, do not turn off your unit. I mean, we could probably explain this to better in our literature too, but it is on one of the training manual pages. To, but it's that time of year, right? If you've just got your heat pump and you haven't seen this before, perfectly normal. It'll have some type of code on it. it if it could say in defrost mode, but you got uh, you got seven lines to do the LED display per digit, right? So ours is like the D, we're probably backwards on the camera, but the D and the F. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and so that you're supposed to discern what that means. And most people, if they haven't seen it before, don't. But 
but but you're good. You'll feel if you put your hand up to the indoor unit when it's in defrost mode, it's going to feel cold. But that indoor unit does not actually. I don't think any have air coming through. At least ours does not have air coming through it when it's in defrost mode because you don't want it. You're you don't want because in effect it's running as an air conditioner at that point. So, but it's an air conditioner without air coming through your wall mounted mm -hmm. indoor unit. And but okay, so not so not it's not soaking up a lot of heat because there's not much airflow through the indoor unit coil, but it's soaking up enough heat to get that outdoor coil above freezing, and then yeah, so when that outdoor coil the the T4 sensor thermostat senses okay, I'm at around 50 degrees now, that's when it knows it's good to cut off the whatever. I mean different control systems will have different configurations, but that's I think ours is 50 degrees when when it's heated up that outdoor coil to be. 50 degrees at that point you, the, the at 50 degrees once the coil is at that temp, that temperature the system logically thinks okay there's no more frost on here and we get back to re-reversing the reversing cycle and bring some heat back in here so well that's what we're hoping it. for yeah get the heat pumping thanks dave all right uh, folks thanks, if guys. you have a, a, any questions uh comments please leave them down below like we're going to be doing a lot more content uh, both short form and these kind of long form interviews so anything you have um, Dave is happy to answer. So thank you. Thank you, Todd. Thanks, guys. All right. Yep. Yeah, bye bye.